Now, it looks like Gary Lineker could soon be returning to our screens with reports this morning. A deal with the BBC is imminent. It is, of course, it follows days of, well, mayhem, it would seem, caused by the presenter's tweets over government immigration policy. Well, ITV News UK editor Paul Brand joins me now. Looks like they're going to sort it, but for goodness sake, this could all have been sorted out long ago, couldn't it? Yeah, and so many football puns on all the front pages over the weekend. Oh, yeah. I think it all added up to one big own goal for the BBC because of the way that it ended up uh, being handled, really. Yeah, it's badly handled. You know, it was a difficult tweet for them to have to deal with. You know, we know that they're under huge scrutiny about impartiality at the BBC because of the licence fee, etc, etc, etc. They get a lot of political pressure for all of that. And so, of course, they have to take these matters seriously. Yeah. But it looked at the end of last week as though it was all dying down. They'd kind of spoken to Gary Lineker. He clearly wasn't thrilled about it, but they'd seem to have come to sort of some accommodation. Yeah. And then they asked him to step back for a match of the day and it all blew up again. But and did then... they not know that was going to happen? Because, of course, the sports department's going to be in uproar. Of course, the pundits aren't going to go on. I mean, they're a tight-knit group. Yeah. And they all take care of each other. You know, I mean, it, you could see it coming a mile off. Yeah, and I think Gary Lineker has just emerged in an even more powerful position, actually. Totally. Because he's shown just how much support that he has. Yes. And just how strongly other people within the sports department, as you say, feel about... Yeah being able to say what they want to say on Twitter. Yeah. And they're not news and current affairs journalists, which is where many, pe many people think there is a bit of a distinction there. You know, mm -hmm. It's not quite mm -hmm. the same as going on the news and presenting an impartial report. If you're a sports pundit, it, it's a bit different, isn't it? No, well, it is. We'll look at Andrew Neil, for example. He is, you know, a, a, he, he is news and current affairs and he's allowed to say what he wants. Lord Sugar, for goodness sake. Yes. You know, yeah. he's can basically come out and told everybody to vote Tory. Even um, Mary Berry Mary has had the odd view on yeah, government policy. She, she has. And this, I think, is the difficulty for the BBC, is where you draw the line. Mm. For example, if you've got comedians on comic relief, are you going to go and vet them all and make sure none of them have criticised the government along the way? You can, I mean, goodness, there'll be no comedians on it. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just really difficult to know where to draw the no, line. No, it is, but also it has put the BBC under scrutiny. It's put the chairman of the BBC under scrutiny for all of the rows that's been going on about loans to Boris Johnson, the former PM. So they've actually brought loads of, well, dreadful, dreadful things on their own heads. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration came yeah. from, from within the BBC, because they were already annoyed, really, that Richard Sharp had questioned the BBC's impartiality, for right or wrong, whether you think he has or whether you think he hasn't. It was all across the headlines, wasn't it, that he'd organised or helped organise this loan for Boris Johnson. People said at the time, well, how can you have a BBC chairman who's that close to uh, a former prime minister? Yeah. And then they come down like a ton of bricks on Gary Lineker for one tweet, yeah. which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, is isn't really influencing a political outcome quite as much as having a BBC chairman who's close to the Prime Minister. Indeed. So I think they felt as though it was inconsistent within the BBC. It is, you know, I think they have to actually sit down and sort out the rules. They, they yes. do. And maybe Gary Lineker in his Twitter account, perhaps he puts my views are my own. Because a lot of people do that, don't they? Views yeah. all my own. And then that's kind of as a I get out of jail free card. Yeah. And because then you can do that. But clearly they need to sort it out for, for Saturday. Bizarre match of the day was weird on Saturday night. Yeah, well, wasn't it? Viewing figures were up because there was they obviously were. a bit of a court factor <laughs> but, but and they wanted, wanted to have a little look. And but. we didn't get the sports round up. We usually get at half past five. Or, um, so I was watching BBC Scotland and we didn't get that at all. And it was just odd. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very, very strange. But I think, you know, you mentioned this kind of changing the rules. I think that's where we're headed with, with right. this compromise that they're looking at yeah. now because it gives them both a bit of a chance to climb down. The BBC execs and Gary Lineker can kind of say, well, look, we've come to an accommodation. We're going to review yeah. the rules around social media, take a bit of time to think about it. In the meantime, Gary Lineker goes back to presenting Match of the Day while all that's going on sure. and the BBC execs can sort of have a bit of a quiet tea in the corner uh, and, and not be under quite so much yeah. scrutiny about exactly. the decisions that they're making. They all need to go in a course <laughs> a management course i mean for goodness sake the bbc's full of that they spend half their time doing that but it clearly doesn't work thank you paul as always no a joy problem. thank you so so much and i hope they get it sorted out in time for saturday